Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I am Vicki Carbon Miller, Dean of Student Affairs. And I'm, I'm trying to. I'm so sorry, Claudia. I was trying to make sure that they could see me oh. too. <laughs> and I'm Claudia Perkins, Student Rights and Responsibilities and Restorative Practices Coordinator. So, so the, welcome. Yes, welcome. And then I don't know if you can. I, I'm getting a little confused with the owl, so I don't know if you can see. Oh, yes. Thank they you. can see you. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, so can, good. Yeah. Oh, thank awesome. You. Uh, so Claudia and I are from the Office of Student Affairs, and we wanted to just share some highlights with all of you to help support you in the classroom, whether you are experiencing any sort of behavioral concerns or academic concerns. So what we thought would be an easy idea, just with the time that we're given, is to show you and walk you through the Student Affairs website. It has all the information that you're going to need if there was to be an issue in your classroom. However, if there's anything that you remember today, just contact us. You don't need <laughs> anything, just contact us and we will walk you through the whole process. So we'll, uh, Jay, do you mind if I go on? Oh, yeah, yeah. Show them some highlights of the website. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. can this part down. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, sorry. I was hit. I was trying oh, no, to. You go under the website if you go on NC Mesa and then you just search for us under Student Affairs. But we also put our bit.ly on here as well. Uh, the biggest piece of information for our faculty is, is under faculty forums and support. And so we will just walk you through some of the main points of our website. But the big piece is policy 5500 is the student code of conduct. So all the expectations that we have of our community is, is in there. So students are, um, our students and our, our community as a whole, really to, to respect one another and to maintain that in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. So when we talk about a violation of policy 5500, that means that it's, uh, that's the student code of conduct. And that means maybe a student maybe leaning toward the violation or has actually violated. But we'll walk you through the whole process. Um, if you do determine that a student has violated our code of conduct. But it is very important to note that we, we expect that our entire community maintains civility and respect, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's a student, a faculty, a community member, all of us as a whole create a safe space. And so I know Claudia is going to share some rights and responsibilities. So you'll, you'll see this image too, and we have some resources at the bottom of the page if you'd like to put them in your campus shell, and we really recommend that. Uh, because that way it's right there for students to look at or if there starts to be an issue before we always like to be proactive it's there for you to discuss with the student um, so because the community rights go across the campus so stu there is a student complaint process and this actually shows the student how to file a complaint um, so there's different types of complaints like Vicki said there's behavioral there's academic um, there may be students having concerns regarding their 504 accommodation. So if the student is enrolled with their disability services and they have accommodations in the classroom and maybe there's a concern, we always ask that you reach out to DSPS, the DSPS counselor, and we'll work as a team. And a lot of times, Vicki and I will also be involved in that so we can work as a team so that everyone, the faculty feels supported, the student feels supported. So there's different types of complaints, um, gender discrimination and sexual harassment goes uh, immediately to our district. We have a Title IX office at the district. So if any student shares with you that they've experienced any type of sexual assault, uh, sexual discrimination, um, stalking, any kind of sexual violence, we as employees, the only ones who are not responsible employees are the, uh, are the counselors in our student health, student mental health services. We do need to reach out and let the Title IX coordinator know. You can do that through your dean, um, but definitely we like to be proactive on our campus and make sure our students are safe. Or if any, uh, it goes for employees too. And employees, adjuncts, faculty, administrators, classified professionals, everyone falls under our Title IX, which is with the district. So there's different ways to file complaints. Um, hopefully, a lot of times, like I said, if you feel like there may be an issue with a student, please reach out to us. The sooner we can get involved, the better, because we're here to support you in the classroom, right? So just make sure you know that we're always here. Okay, so I'm gonna now share a little bit about our incident concern form. 
So if you see an incident on campus, not necessarily in your classroom, because we have a separate one for classroom, but if there is, usually it's a parking lot issue. So if you are parking and you see two students arguing in the parking lot, or you see something that was concerning, um, usually it's, it's the park, parking lot is what we've seen, or if you're walking across campus, not in your classroom, though is we do ask that you fill out the incident reporting form. This collects all the information and Claudia and I will receive it and we'll be able to work with the, the parties that need to be addressed. So if it's working with a department or maybe campus police, whatever the, whatever the issue may be, we will get notified of it. We'll call you usually to say, okay, let's talk about this. What did you see and, and get some more information? Um, but if you fill out the form, but it does ask for the choose the nature of this form or the, the nature of this complaint. And usually it's gender, uh, kind of the general conduct report. Um, sexual harassment will go to sexual assault, sexual harassment will go to our Title IX team. And then student of concern. I'm going to share with you that Claudia and I have found that completing the student of concern, if it's a concern, you don't really want to wait for a form. Um, and so to, to upload it to this, it, it may take a while to get routed tests. This goes to the district first and then it's sent to us. So we have a separate Mesa College Student of Concern form that I'll show you all, but it may be in Student of Concern, we'll talk about that, but it's usually if there's a concern in your classroom, you notice, I'm kind of jumping, but I'll share with you why you would fill out a Student of Concern form, is if you notice during week one, a student is in your class, sitting at the front row, engaged in the conversation, really um, showing up to be present. But as the semester moves on, you're noticing that they're hygiene, they're not taking care of themselves, or they seem agitated in your class, they're no longer sitting at the front. Something is going on. You don't need to know what is going on. You, can, you just notice something. You may not know, you don't have to investigate it, but you know that this student may, may be going through food insecurities, housing issues, mental health concerns. Well, that's what our form is designed to do, is to get all that information so we can reach out to the student. So it is, it's a timely, we know it's pretty time sensitive. That's why putting it through this form is a little bit, uh, sometimes it gets routed and then comes to us, but we'd rather you do the other form that I'll share with you. Yeah. yeah would you want to fill out a student concern form if you're working, uh, if you're looking at doing mandatory reporting as well? Or would that be the, the main the process? Title IX. I would, I would contact the Title yeah, IX right, right, right away. Yeah, because okay. what we don't want is to get lost in the whole yeah. shuffle of going through this portal, that portal. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. If there is a mandate, if there is a sexual assault, sexual anything that the student may have been violated or harmed or physically assaulted, definitely just contact the Title IX office. Thank you. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll go back to on-campus removal, but let me just share with you all so you can uh, see the referral form for student of concern, the, the issue that we we're talking about. This goes to our student health, and we've got an awesome team of mental health therapists at Mesa. So you complete this form, you share as much information as you can, and as you've noticed, but sometimes it's academic difficulty, anxiety, or hygiene, whatever you have seen, you share a little bit of information, and then um, our mental health therapist, normally the coordinator, will call you and talk to you and see what is it that we can, how can we support that student? So they'll typically contact the student and say, hey, come on in, we've got some resources to support you. And so uh, it's a great, this has worked so well for us because we'll notice that a lot of the issues in the classroom will first start out as a student concern matter and we'd love to address it before it erupts. If we can help that student and get the student the support that they need, we will see less behavioral disruption in that class. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that that makes. Are there any questions with this? Oh, Carlin, can you? Hi, Carlin. I can't. I see your hand. <laughs> Going back to having concerns of dangerous situations, please remind everybody. Every single classroom has a red box or red switch plate with a button. That button, if you have problems or concerns, whether it's a medical emergency or a dangerous situation, you press that button and it opens up a direct intercom to the um, district police office dispatcher. And it does not disconnect until the police arrive and they disconnect it. It stays open. A student that had epilepsy is the one that told me about it originally because he said, if I ever have a seizure, have somebody press that button. And a lot of people don't even know that exists. And so every one of you, when you get into your classroom, look for the red switch plate that has a silver button. Right. And I know some faculty have even shared with their students, if something happens, they students can press the red button. So, right. So. 
anyone in that classroom can go ahead and press that red button. And thanks for sharing that. And Canvas Police will be there immediately. In fact, in the classrooms, it is faster to call College Police, press that red button, um, and anywhere on our campus than to actually dial 911. So because our campus police know where it is, and they dial 911, then they have to call our campus police. So, um, and we all say you should have dispatch in your phone. The number of ditch dispatch is 619-388-6405. So because you don't know, sometimes you may be walking around on a campus, somebody had a fall one time, thank goodness somebody had dispatch right in there, they, they called immediately. Um, so... Also, nice. when you say dial 911, you might want to check with the police because at one point in time, if we're using a personal phone, they didn't want us calling 911 because that would go to the city right. they, police. They, no, yeah, they want you to call dispatch. We don't, we don't, that is faster. I'm sorry, did you, did I say 911? You no, want to you call, said, you want to call right. dispatch. Yeah, in place. Eight, eight, six, well, eight, even eight. your, even your structure, I mean, your, um, First paragraph that's up on the screen says, if you have an emergency, call police dispatch, or if you're on campus, or 911. But well, there's yeah, a different way to call 911 so you get police dispatch. It's a faster way, I understand, and that may have been updated. But that is also why those red buttons are so handy, because you don't need to get your phone out and do it. Yeah, no, that's true. They're right there. Thanks for bringing that up. That is a great point about putting in your phone. There's a lot of times like in exercise science, we're out in the field, like teaching. So you never know when you're on campus, like if you come across something and want to be able to call. So just having it in your phone has been convenient for me to in those situations. And then also calling that number, our college police understand how to unlock access points for fire and everybody else coming through. So Alerting them is also helpful for that. We had spoken Dell 100 building one time, and I tried calling 911, and it yeah, right. went through. And I went to dispatch, and it went through right away. We started yeah. coordinating on everything. So, um, great point about putting in your phone. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? Or? Perfect. So we saw a lot of you putting the phone number in your phone. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. So if you need it. All right, so now what we're going to do, we talked about students of concern, and now what we're going to do is Claudia is going to share a little bit about um, if you have some behavioral issues in your classroom and how it is that you would address that. Right, so if you do have behavioral issues, hopefully we'll talk first, but it can be that you have such a behavioral issue that you need to remove that student immediately. Like you don't have time to call anybody. So no, as a faculty member, you have a right to remove a disruptive student from your class for that class time and the following class time. Between that time, we're gonna bring the student into student affairs. We're gonna talk with you to find out what happened, what are your expectations, kind of what led to the disruption um, so that our goal is to have the student return and be successful. And we use a lot of restorative practices. Um, that's really, that's what we, that's what we, that we embrace restorative practices on our campus. And we try to all work together as a team to have that student come back in your class, meet your expectations, and be successful. That's our goal. So there's two forms. That is the faculty removal for a disruptive student on campus. We also have one if your class is online, right? And it's a little bit easier online because you just can remove the student from Zoom. It is a little bit more challenging um, in the classroom. If the student doesn't leave, um, usually they do when they're removed, but if something happened where the student wasn't re wasn't leaving, then again, you would want to reach out to college police. Um, but usually when a student is asked to remove, they, they usually will leave the room. So any we question? work with college police. We work so closely with college police. They don't want to have to remove the student. And so, because that's a little, they won't come in I mean, physically. Exactly. Really. They are not going to do that, but they're going to have a conversation with the student. Uh, in a, in a very restorative way, we've had to do this a couple of times, and they'll just talk to the student outside and be like, hey, man, you know, that you're really causing quite a disruption here. Probably better to go outside um, and deal with deal with it outside versus taking up with a classroom scene. So we, we usually don't have to ever get to that. And then during the COVID period, we had a couple of mask issues that we had to have to involve just support of the police. It was never Doesn't to usually. harass. Yeah. And it was never to cause, um, cause that fear in a classroom. Yeah. Okay, so... 
We did talk about on campus. Is anybody here teaching remote? Just in case we are that we would we would just share the online removal because you can act beautiful. So this is going to pertain to you. So if you do have a disruptive student in the classroom, we have an online removal form and Claudia can walk us through that. And so with this form, um, we will be working with Brian Weston, who's our Dean of Online Learning, because he actually has to take the student and remove them from your class, right? So they will no longer be able to access Canvas. So because if the student was able to access that, of course, then there could be problems with maybe an online discussion or anything like that. So they are removed from your class for that two days. Again, we meet with the student, find out your expectations, and then our goal is to have that student return. And so Claudia and I, during the school year, we do a flex workshop where we go over all the steps to follow because we usually issue a warning. We have you as a faculty member issue a warning to the student rather than just jump set of removing the student. So we're kind of jumping to the removal of a student if needed because that's an urgent matter if you were experiencing it. But if you're noticing behavioral issues in the class, oh, go ahead, thank you. Uh, call us and we'll work with you. Claudia is phenomenal. Yeah, give us a call. First thing, we we work with all the chairs, all the deans, we, all the faculty. We all work together. We're we're just a big team yeah. that helps support you and the student. So that oh, addresses. Oh, do we let's make? I just had a comment. First, I want to reiterate what an amazing team you are and how supportive you are. Um, I will say only because I think many people introduce themselves as teaching for the first time. I just want to share that from, from my perspective, um, if there's a behavior in the classroom that is disruptive to your teaching or to other students learning, that's disruptive behavior. And it may seem super small at the beginning, but by the time it's happened the 10th time, People, you know, faculty are exploding, like I can't stand it anymore. So the suggestion is always to deal with it in the beginning, and then it often keeps it from escalating. And to have, as you as you become more experienced teaching, you'll figure out what those things are and put them in your syllabus and give, give those directions. But I would just say, I'm just encouraged, because I have so many faculty come in and say, well, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But it just kept going and escalating. So don't anything is a big deal if it's getting in the way of you teaching or others learning. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah. Perfectly said. And we're here to support you. Come on, you want to just check it, like, is it? <laughs> check it first. We'll yes. tell you who it is. <laughs> and we want to talk about too. I know uh, Ashanti isn't here to do the welcome, but she usually would just talk about everything we do on this campus is to support student success. And so if addressing a behavioral concern, that is truly helping the students succeed. They're not going to succeed in the classroom when they're disrupting and taking away. So really all of it is to support that student and to have a successful experience, but also the, their peers too. It, it can be very disruptive for everybody else trying to learn. So we want to work with you on that, on those issues. So I think that covers behavioral. In the last piece, we just thought we'd go back to that, right? Yeah, just real quick, because I know yes. we're probably going to want to talk about it now. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, Join us for our left workshop. Okay, so here we're just going to quickly, if there's academic misconduct in the classroom. That would be plagiarism, cheating, right? Anything. So then we do have a form. Again, call us and we'll walk you through the form. Um, we definitely do like to have the form because sometimes we'll see it in different schools, right? Maybe something happened in math and they didn't do it again in math, but maybe in English. It gives us the chance to talk to the student and use restorative measures to let them know that this isn't serving them. So, so just we are there for academic or behavioral. And this is the format you complete. It's all very self-explanatory. You submit it to your dean and then your dean will send it back. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, so we're here. here. Yes, we are here. I'm so sorry to go over. But we, are, we are here. Last thing is just know who we are. And we will support you through any of these issues that you may be addressing. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you.